terms of being able to, you know, have a bubble canopy, for example, you know, you really get a limited field of view in the, in the 117 because of the little windows. At the heart of each F-117 is a series of powerful computers that control virtually every aspect of its performance. The pilot tells the airplane what he wants it to do by moving the stick or the rudders. The computer says, okay, the pilot moved the stick back, the, airplane, the pilot wants the airplane to go up. It says, all right, what's my angle of attack, what's my airspeed, what can I do? And then it positions the flight controls to make that happen. So to a pilot, it's transparent. It responds the way you expect it to respond, uh, thanks to computer technology. What, you know, what's really happening out there is these control surfaces are moving at an extremely high rate of speed, and, and uh, sensors are working uh, overtime to make sure that it doesn't exceed any limitations that would send it out of control. Intentionally, there's, uh, there's systems, and there's backup systems, and there's backup to the backup, so you don't really typically end up with too many airborne problems. What really sold stealth to the world was the huge success they had at the outset of the Desert Storm engagements. Uh, those 117s were in and out and nobody knew they were even there. Despite some of the heaviest anti-aircraft fire seen in decades, every F-117 deployed against Baghdad returned home safely, without as much as a single scratch. It was clear that the stealth technology developed by the Skunk Works was without equal. When you want to attack some kind of a uh, highly defended area, highly defended targets like the Baghdad situation in Desert Storm, uh, you want to send some people in there and hit the hit the key targets on the first night of the war. There's only one place you can call, and it's the stealth. It's the F-117, and I think because of that, it'll be there uh, for quite some time. There is no question that the F-117 forever changed the nature of air warfare. From now on, no new weapon system will be designed without a stealth consideration. However, this technology is not just limited to airplanes. In the 1980s, Skunk Works engineers took their radar evading magic to the high seas with the Sea Shadow, a vessel that looked more like a Civil War era ironclad than the warship of tomorrow. Are you one of the millions of people who think you just can't learn a second language? The problem isn't that you can't learn, it's that you've been using the wrong method. America's stable of sophisticated supersonic fighters and high-tech bombers proved to be a mismatch at the outset of the war on terrorism. What was desperately needed was a slow-flying aircraft that could operate at very low altitudes. This need was met by the venerable C-130 Hercules. Designed in the 1950s as a rugged air mobility craft for use in underdeveloped areas, the Hercules soon proved its usefulness in a variety of settings and has remained in continuous production. Today, this slow and low-flying plane has become a staple over the skies of Afghanistan. Besides transporting troops and equipment, the CA-130 is also being used to jam enemy electronic communications. The addition of several small sensors and antenna on the tail are the only indication that this CA-130 has been specially modified. The remarkable stability and long range of the C-130 make it the perfect choice for this type of mission, which is among the most classified of the war. Just like its faster and sleeker brethren, the unlikely looking C-130 has demonstrated its abilities as a superior spy plane. While the C-130 frequently serves as an airborne command post, its agility allows it to perform some amazing duties on the battlefield.
using a rapidly assembled trapwire apparatus hung from a balloon. This C-130 gives a whole new meaning to the term airlift by picking up cargo without even landing. Specially trained technicians position themselves on the open ramp thousands of feet above the ground as they begin to haul their cargo on board. This recovery process requires a series of delicate maneuvers while constantly checking tension on the cable. only thin safety harnesses, the crew reach all the way out of the aircraft to secure the cargo and head for home. However, its most impressive use to date has been that of a gun platform. The C-130's ability to slowly fly in tight circles at low altitudes enables it to train its arsenal of cannons and gatling guns on specific targets with deadly accuracy. The results are always devastating. Like the U-2, the C-130 Hercules is approaching its sixth decade in service to its country and is yet another example of the timeless quality that is a hallmark of Skunk Works design. In 1990, the Skunk Works moved from its historic Burbank headquarters to its present-day location in Palmdale. With the move came a new focus. For the past 20 years, Lockheed has been thought of as a maker of spy planes and transports. But with the introduction of the F-A-22 Raptor, the Skunk Works was back in the fighter business. It was becoming evident that the United States needed a replacement for the aging F-15. The F-A-22 was designed to regain air superiority through quantum leaps in performance and survivability. Utilizing next-generation stealth technology, it is capable of flying against the most advanced radar networks and densest concentrations of surface-to-air missiles in the world. But in addition to being stealthy, the F-A-22 is also economical. It can cruise at supersonic speeds without fuel-guzzling afterburners. And it costs about 4% less than an F-15 to operate. America's fleet of combat aircraft is rapidly aging and increasingly dependent on designs and technology dating back to the 1960s. While the F-22 Raptor was designed to enhance air superiority, there is an immediate need for a sophisticated new aircraft that can be deployed in great numbers. Inside this hangar is the latest Skunk Works creation, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Outwardly, this plane looks similar to the F-22. However, it does something the Raptor will never be able to do. The Joint Strike Fighter is a Stovall aircraft. That is, one that can take off in a very short space and land perfectly. The Stovall concept originated with the early XFV-1 propeller-driven craft and grew into today's familiar subsonic carrier jump jets. But the Joint Strike Fighter will be taking Stovall into the world of supersonic flight and stealth. However, this ambitious project emerged from humble beginnings. I had one little project, which was to uh, see if we could come up with a new concept for a supersonic Stovall airplane. And that grew into the Stovall Strike Fighter program. The Stovall airplane is very similar to what we envisioned uh, in the original study, a uh, shaft-driven lift van with a single F-22 style engine in it. Essentially, we viewed it as an F-16 with vertical takeoff capability and um, stealth. At the heart of the Joint Strike Fighter is a unique shaft-driven lift fan that will enable the aircraft to land vertically in a column of 